Thank you indeed for staying with us for this second part of the show. My name is Peter Wakaba here on KTN Business Today. Now in this second part, we will be discussing Matters Millet and an initiative that has been put in place to encourage the youth and other players to essentially start to interact with this and discover how it can enable them of course grow economically and solve the food security riddle i'll be joined in studio uh, by the unit liver ceo his name is lak ocheng i uh, will also have in studio george in Jeruge from uh, the farm to market africa uh, program uh, of the wild food program and of course professor catherine kunyanga from the university of nairobi now to just build uh, the context around this. Now, off the back of the Standard Group initiative recently to engage students and other young people in the role that they can play in the transformation of food systems, we are discussing the Great Millet Quest. Now, this is an initiative that seeks to unlock the future of millet in shaping the future of agriculture. And I think a good place to start is ask why millet and why Unilever? I think we start with you. And yes. Yeah. Yes. So thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why Unilever and why Millet? So yes. I think to explain this, let me take a step back. Eh? Mm -hmm. So if you look at what is happening across the world right now, uh, the world is changing. Yes. We have the effect of climate change. We have geopolitical tensions, problems that are affecting global trade, which uh, also get to affect uh, businesses like ours. And in all that setup, it then gets to bring to focus food security yeah. or food insecurity for that matter. Mm -hmm. So as a business Unilever, we have this belief that we need to have a positive impact in the community that uh, we get to operate in. And one way of delivering that sustainability is through regenerative agriculture. Mm -hmm. So it's an area that Unilever is looking at uh, globally to look at ways in which we can be able to support uh, regenerative uh, agriculture, but also drive business sustainability. Mm -hmm. Now, the global supply challenges have been such that yes. building resilience around the sourcing of raw material is a key uh, part of business uh, uh, management. And uh, with that, we then looked at for the inputs that go into our products and in alignment with that desire to have a positive impact and offer from a food perspective, nutritious offering into the market. We looked around and we saw that opportunity uh, where there's an untapped potential mm -hmm. around millet in terms of the impact that it can have in solving some of the challenges that have yes. been brought uh, by those scenarios that I've uh, explained uh, uh, as well. Now, we then looked at all the crops, and, and in our business, uh, millet is one of the, what we call the future, 50 future foods. Mm -hmm. And the kind of environment that we operate in, the climate, is very ideal for growing of millet. And millet, as a crop, is actually a very nutritious grain. It is high in proteins, it is high in fiber, uh, and in all that, it actually uses very little water uh, for it to be able to, uh, to thrive. So it makes it very resilient as well. So when you put all that together, we saw an opportunity for us to be able to, be able to partner and develop that in the market as we uh, drive resilience and promote <laughs> local economy. Uh, I like the fact that you were talking about partnerships because our yes. other guests then come into play. Uh, Professor, um, what's the role of academia in this conversation, especially from the point of view that uh, you are then the custodians of this knowledge? Uh, you're then the custodians of the youth that we are talking about. What role are you playing in this initiative? So we are the people, of course, as you said, who have the knowledge. Like yes. you said, millet is very nutritious. Mm -hmm. I want to add also has health benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, like it has anti-diabetic. Like if you make a product from millet yes. and targeting diabetic people, you're good to go low glycemic index i would name so we, we the universities generate this knowledge they have evidence-based studies that show actually millet has these benefits and of course remember uh, given we are talking of uh, food that has been labeled like an orphan food so many labels uh, poor man's food among others not only millet actually yes. this used to fill our granaries when we were growing up and now in kenya without maize we have no food and we have millets, sorghum, and others. Yes. So the role of academia is to guide the private sector on what, what, what benefits are we talking about. Have studies validated this? You've seen uh, quarks doing uh, this powder 
bromelet, sorghum, calling it immune booster. But where is the evidence? But now when the academia come, is, uh, come in, especially through our young students who are actually doing active research and have evidence to support those claims, then you can easily sell a product, even mm -hmm. in an international market. Uh, for example, safety is a big uh, part of a product development. So when you're developing a new product, for example, in millet, you have to test safety. So only the universities can actually support the private sector in providing that kind of evidence. That's why we have the young minds. Remember, like the University of Nairobi, we attract the best cream in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, agriculture is our big, big, big sector in the university. And also we are mentoring students to like agriculture. It's not farming. Ga agriculture has gone beyond that level. So for us to address food security, then we need innovations in agriculture. We need to change how agriculture has been uh, done before by our mothers, our great grandfathers, for example, mm -hmm. and bring young people who can bring digital technologies can come with innovations in millet. These are what will drive the market because I can assure you without market, farmers will not produce millet. We have to show that there is market demand for millet and only the university can provide or answer these research questions and then the industry can pick this up and take it to the market. Mm -hmm. And that's where we come in, uh, in this collaboration with Unilever. And personally, I'm happy about this collaboration mm -hmm. because we have a lot we can offer to the private sector. Mm -hmm. yeah. Judge, to bring you into the conversation, uh, countries like Kenya traditionally have had this long supply and value chains across the world for staples like you'll, uh, you'll hear. We get our, um, uh, uh, our wheat all the way from Ukraine. We're getting sugar from Brazil and things like that. So how does this conversation around uh, finger millet uh, re relate when you talk about uh, biodiversity conservation and climate change? Uh, you will recall that uh, we have been going through climate change mm -hmm. over, over time and uh, the productivity of our farmers has been going down. Yes. Uh, having taken the exotic uh, or imported uh, varieties or variations, chains if you like mm -hmm. uh, and historically over time we have abandoned the traditional uh, crops that were doing pretty well in Africa, yes. sorghum, millet, cassava, and the like. Uh, and as a result, the farmers are getting poorer by the day, not because of their making of their own, but because the, the environment is not conducive for that. Uh, some of the very chains that they have been engaging in are also heavy consumers of nutrients from the soil, mm -hmm. require a lot of water. Uh, so we had to come in and look at where are those very chains that we Africans used to grow them yes. uh, without much costs and uh, within the challenging environment they are able to to consume less water, mm -hmm. less nutrients, uh, they are resistant to, to, to pests and diseases mm -hmm. uh, and when we, we we started discussion with Unilever and Future 50 Food uh, Coalition we showed this is the right place to be as, as a WFP organization where we are focused on food security as a one factor then how do we also work around productivity and income generation for the farmer? And also how do we take care of the, 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 the environment and biodiversity? And what are those things that we need to, to build a, as a result? Uh, again, mm -hmm. uh, the genetics, uh, it's a traditional crop. So it's still able to preserve genetics that uh, you can use wild uh, cereals mm -hmm. to continue propagating it mm -hmm. and build a resilient uh, value chain. Okay. I want to bring you back here in, in Catherine and mm. on the basis of something you've just said that this goes beyond, uh, beyond just agriculture. Mm. Talk to us about the opportunities across the value chain that the youth can tap into in regards to this crop mm -hmm. and what that can then lead to in terms of growing the economy. Actually, when Unilever contacted us through the Faculty of Agriculture, th this is a faculty where we look at the entire value chain because mm -hmm. we have departments all the way from uh, looking at research and training in f all the way from when you grow the crops, the agronomy, uh, what you should spray, what at what time, all the way to the market because yes. we have also Department of Agricultural Economics. So I'm glad Unilever because they'll be getting the best of the best because we have to look at it from the beginning. Uh, do we have the right seed for millets? I know traditionally we had those millets and like I could see my grandmother select the best, which was happening also with maize. But mm -hmm. right now I can tell you it cannot work because we have so many varieties, new varieties. Sometimes I see farmers getting confused. So I, I see this coming up. Do we have the right seed for millet that mm -hmm. would give good yields? Because also farmers are concerned about good yields and also less inputs. 
-hmm. You see, uh, like I like what he has said, you don't want to uh, a crop where you are adding a lot of inputs and therefore the farmer bearing the cost and then going to the market to sell it at a very low price. Mm -hmm. So for us, uh, we are looking at the entire value chain. So in terms of these innovations, we want student, young students who can come up for example, with innovations, even digital in, uh, innovations, I don't want to spell out what I've received so far from students, but I, I'm seeing students even with good digital innovations that can guide even farmers knowing which is the best seeds for this area. Like I, when before we started, we just had this conversation that are all the areas that are supposed to be growing millet growing and why are mm -hmm. they not growing? Mm -hmm. So for us to meet the demand that Unilever wants and to, yes. to meet those volumes of products, maybe once we get these innovations, then we need to engage all the parts in the country or agro ecological zones that can actually grow good yielding millet including the Rakanidhi Ukambani. Those are the places where millet, as we were growing up, were growing. But now how do we go back? Then it, we have to start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because junk in, junk out. If you don't have good seeds, then you yes. don't have good eats. So me as a, maybe a food scientist, if I want to make a product, I don't have volumes. And you see also like sorghum, we are still struggling. Mm -hmm. uh, EBL said, yeah, we need sorghum. But most farmers, because of the market prices, they tried one year and then they stopped. So we, we need to assure that farmer that there's a market-driven demand. Mm -hmm. That if I grow millet... I'll get competitive prices for my product. And that's where Unilever comes in. Because if they have a product, let's say a cereal or an extruded product from millet, mm -hmm. and they demand these volumes and they are paying farmers well, then farmers will definitely grow. Mm -hmm. Not only for Unilever or for the market or the private sector, but also for their own consumption. Because I've seen students coming up to me and saying, Doctor, you have an innovation. Why should you eat maize, 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 maize? Mm -hmm. Personally, I know my kids don't like ugali. We yeah. need to demaze Kenya, in short. Mm -hmm. We need to now say, millet is here to stay. But also, the way I used to take millet made by my grandmother is not the way my daughter will take. I can tell you, and I've tried. Mm -hmm. I've tried uh, green grams, dengu. People yes. call it dengu. Yes. You cook it the way we normally used to cook, they will not eat. Mm -hmm. So cook millet the way it was done, they will not eat. So we need to look at what are the current market trends in products. What would I, my kid would, would want to see? And that's why we are talking of young people. What would a young person, you see, those, those are the people who drive our, what we eat, what we buy. Actually, mm -hmm. where, and this you can ask yourself, when you go to the supermarket, yes. do you buy what you prefer or what your kids prefer? Mm -hmm. You buy the cereal they like, you buy the food they like. So we need to look at what product would I want to see in the shelf? What mm -hmm. would my kid eat? Not the millet, porridge. Porridge, no one will take porridge. And uh, some came with those ideas of porridge. No, these porridges, even me, I can't take a porridge. Yes. Yes. Mm. So we need these young people now. They are the right people to tell us what would you want to eat mm -hmm. in, uh, that incorporates millet. And that's why we are using them, because they know best. Yes. And then combined that they're in the university, they know the research, they know what can be made, what cannot. These are the people who will give us these innovations. But also, now we cannot totally alienate the farmers, and that's why they are coming in. Yes. We need to work with them. Can farmers grow the right quality? Because I can tell you in processing, and Unilever is here, you cannot make a product without good quality millet grain. Mm. Uh, and uh, there is something I want to add quickly. Yes. <laughs> you, mentioned, I, oh, you mentioned about finger millet. Millet is very, I was telling him, if you give someone sorghum and millet, they will not know the difference. Mm -hmm. Also millet, we have different varieties. I know Kenya is mostly pearl millet and also uh, finger, finger millet, millet yes. but we have also other millets. So what type of variety are we talking about? So mm -hmm. there are so many things we need to think about and see what is best for our Kenyan setup or African setup that can really produce volumes for the market. Okay. Yes. I wanted to bring the CEO back in here and especially uh, because both guests have t uh, kept talking about how Unilever uh, came with the vision of what uh, you want to do, the vision of this new product, uh, the vision of integrating millet into this commercial value chain. Now talk to us about the entire initiative and I want you to start from the great millet quest and how then that initiative becomes part of this bigger picture. Yes. Mm. Yeah, so we've, we have a very healthy product portfolio. Yes. And uh, the most critical thing at the end of the day is the market for the product that you produce. Uh, we've all grown up uh, as children being fed on uh, Ujiwa Wimbi, yes. uh, eating the brown ugali. Mm. And so we know what millet is. But beyond that, as Dr. Ari has enumerated, you find that the younger consumers are not necessarily using it in the same manner. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. So the reason why we've opted to partner with the University of Nairobi is then to say, okay, could we tap into the creativity that the students would have mm -hmm. in terms of developing new food solutions yes. that then have the legs or the potential to be commercialized, which is now where we come in to be able to act as of takers for what the, uh, the farmers then would mm -hmm. be able to produce. So getting the product or its usage right is really important and that's where the students come in. Yes. And then also we are hoping to tap into the wealth of knowledge that the university itself also has. Huh? Mm. Yeah? As Dr. has enumerated, a lot of research has gone into this even before and there is a great opportunity for us to be able to work together, the private sector and the university to be able to tap into uh, this wealth of knowledge uh, as we uh, take, mm. look for opportunity eventually really yeah, yes. to fulfill our responsibility which is to have a positive impact in the mm. community that, that uh, mm. we operate in. We have just about five minutes before we mm. conclude and I want to come around for a, a sort of last uh, uh, cycle of comments and I want to start here. Uh, George, the fact that uh, from where you sit with the farm to market initiatives, what are the challenges farmers are facing? What are the opportunities in this for youth and other people? Because we want to talk money on this show. And then, of course, what in terms of policy needs to be done to create uh, this entire, bring this entire picture together? I think there are quite a number of challenges and opportunities that exist in this space. Uh, yes. The opportunity is the, the value chain withstands a challenging environmental situation. Mm -hmm. It's still a better margin value chain compared to other series. Yes. Uh, it's low cost, uh, high output, uh, in very harsh con con conditions. I think the opportunities here are around the seed producers. Mm -hmm. With a market as big as Unilever and other companies that we are working with, the demand is higher than what we can supply. So we still have a, a reg room to, 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 to build production. So the seed companies have an opportunity to multiply seeds that are quality for the market. Uh, the input service providers also have an opportunity in that space because with income, the, the space, mechanization, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite a labor intensive uh, value chain. So especially at harvest, post-harvest and management because it's quite small. How do you mechanize uh, uh, threshing? How do you mechanize drying? How do you mechanize uh, delivery to, to avoid uh, contamination. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of uh, space around there. Mm -hmm. uh, the good thing is that Kenya government has a policy that protects uh, cassava, sorghum, finger mm -hmm. millet. Yes, and there's a tax, ta ta tax benefit that mm -hmm. the companies that buy these value chains do. So the, the corporates can take advantage of that tax benefit to mm -hmm. mop out these orphaned crops. Yes. Uh, two, there are areas that are considered non-economical. Yes. Uh, in Kenya, because economical to everybody is growing maize. Mm -hmm. By growing these orphaned crops, millet and the like, you open up economic activities in marginalized areas. Mm -hmm. So it's creating opportunities in those spaces. Okay. Then we have the school meals program, mm -hmm. the 10 million school meals program that the government is pushing in. You cannot talk about school meals if you are not talking about nutritious mm -hmm. foodstuffs. Mm -hmm. Finger millet, uh, cassava, sorghum sits in there. So yes. it's it's, it's a multi-pronged approach that addresses a number of challenges that the country has been going through, food security, economic challenges, mm -hmm. climate change, mm -hmm. uh, ab, um, improvement of agriculture uh, from rudimentary labor intensive to mechanized agriculture. So there are quite a number of opportunities that generate revenue for the country mm -hmm. and at the same time address the food security challenges. Okay, thank you. Uh, Catherine, in 30 seconds, mm -hmm. what essentially uh, do you think are the key things we need to get right in terms of driving this initiative for to say that mm -hmm. we are attaining the objectives which we set out to achieve? Okay, so for me, and uh, this is where I applaud uh, Unilever for yes. partnering with the university. That partnership has been weak. Mm -hmm. I would not say it's not existing because yes. we've, we've, we've had it with different industries. Mm -hmm. But I'm comparing with places like Europe where I got educated. And yes. um, in the universities, actually, it's the universities that uh, give solution to the private sector. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, you find it's the other way sometimes. Yes. Because they do not come to the university to tap on the knowledge we have. And I'm glad that the University of Nairobi, and especially in the office I sit, that we are now really trying to work with the industries, mm -hmm. giving them back 
and also communities, not only the private sector. I can tell you last week I was in Kibwezi training farmers on baobab value addition and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we are no longer that ivory tower that used to publish, gain an academic angle from the books you've written and stuff. But now we are moving towards where we are supporting the private sector, uh, uh, sector the local communities, the farmers, to give back to the community what we, we generate through, through research. So these research outputs are what can help change Kenya, achieve food and nutrition security. And I, I, I would want to also mention um, that the fact that we are bringing young people, and I want to follow up what he has said, we really need to engage agri uh, youth in agriculture and food security. Mm -hmm. It's not before where everyone used to go to Nairobi, do ICT, and leave our old mothers farming. No. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, agriculture is cool for me, and that's what I tell my students. Agriculture is cool. We want to see AI. We are now moving to AI mm -hmm. and all this digital mm -hmm. transformation. We need to see yes. our youth starting all the way farming yes. from where you are saying all the way to the market mm -hmm. and building the private sector. Yes, yeah. I, I'll cut you off there and go to the CEO. In 30 seconds, a lot of people watching us today will be asking uh, themselves, I see opportunities, so where do they start? Uh, what sort of mechanism, what sort of infrastructure have you put in place to mop this up and essentially uh, create the market that you're talking about? And of course, even downstream of your operation in terms of the people who are uh, in the retail sector, what to expect uh, out of this initiative? Yeah, so I think the message I want to leave is that there's money to be made uh -huh. in this, okay? So just to give you some numbers yes. uh, to, to learn this point. We love Mal numbers. Yes, from a localization perspective, for us as Unilever, in 2020, we made a decision and said we want to make 70% mm -hmm. plus of our raw materials to be sourced locally. Yes. At that point in time, we were 40% of that. Now, as at the close of last year, we closed at 65%. Mm -hmm. So we are really ahead of a truck to be able to achieve our 70% plus mm -hmm. uh, target. Yes. Now, when you achieve that 70%, we'll be pumping 7 billion shillings worth of money into the local economy. And that's something that would have been going elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Now, that's an opportunity to bring farmers into this. Now, the millet opportunity then offers an uh, opportunity to make money, to diversify uh, for farmers. But also we are the forefront working with the university and other players in terms of developing the market and the utility and the use for this crop. Mm -hmm. Within the Unilever network, yeah. we also have an opportunity if we are able to secure good quality, consistent supply, then we have an opportunity actually to export to all our other operations mm -hmm. in the world mm -hmm. because we are using these two to grow yes. uh, the market. And there's an opportunity for Kenya to also yes. benefit from this. So that's really what I want to share mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. And anybody who is very much interested, uh, for the students, you have an opportunity to go to www.thegreatmilletquest.com. Yes. Yeah, log in there and see what is in there. But also you can reach out to FTMA as yes. well, who are also acting as agriculture and also the university. But you can also reach us directly uh, mm -hmm. at Unilever as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, really high-powered delegation. Uh, rarely do we have guests to tell us there is money to be made mm -hmm. yes. and how mm -hmm. to do that. But that's what our guests want because we uh, try to do news that they can use. So thank you very much for being part of this conversation. Uh, that, of course, uh, being uh, Lako Cheng, CEO at Unilever, uh, Professor Kathy Kunyanga from the University of Nairobi and George Njoroge from the World Food Programs uh, Farm to Market uh, initiative. Thank you very much for being a part of this. Uh, on that note, uh, we want to bring an end to this conversation, but of course to remind you that uh, we will continue to bring you this sort of incisive discussions that tell you exactly where the money is and how to get it into your pocket. And of course to continue looking out for uh, interesting conversations around agriculture. My name is Peter Akaba. Do have yourselves a good afternoon and thank you for staying with us here today on Business Today. See you next time.